Writing this feels strange. I know I'll face criticism from most readers because I strongly disapprove of my own actions. My boyfriend of three years walked out on me without a word when he discovered me with another man, who happened to be my fiancé at the time. This happened just a week before our scheduled wedding, and I've been devastated ever since. I used to be a carefree young girl who did whatever made her happy, regardless of who got hurt in the process. I had lost several friends due to my behavior, but I never imagined I'd lose the one person I loved so deeply. I was 22 at the time, and I met Jake, who was 26, at a bar on St. T. Patrick's Day. He was the only one in the bar not wearing green that day. He approached me with a clever opening line saying, Hey, leprechaun, here's your pot of gold, as he opened his hand to reveal some actual pot. I was already a bit tipsy, so I thought, why not? And joined him outside for a smoke. So, Mr. Pot of Gold, this stuff is really good. But I have to ask, why aren't you wearing green? I inquired, as I took a drag and passed the blunt to him. I don't conform to societal rules, he replied, taking another drag. We talked for hours that night, both of us as high as kites. I suggested rolling another blunt, but he declined. He had enough pot for at least two more, but that day marked the first time he had ever smoked. He shared that he had noticed me at the bar on previous occasions and learned that I smoked, which, initially, put him off. However, he simply wanted to talk to me, regardless of my smoking habit. He even mentioned that if we were to be together, I'd eventually have to quit. I found it quite bold of him to talk about a potential future together during our first meeting. I wasn't sure if it was him or the weed talking, but I couldn't help but laugh at his comment. He was actually quite attractive, with a strong jawline, tall stature, and his clothes fit him perfectly. He seemed in good shape, too. In that moment, I thought to myself, this could be fun, and decided to go with the flow. Maybe it was the high on my part as well, but there was something about him that felt comforting. His deep, raspy, baritone voice and the way he spoke with so much charisma made me feel drawn to him. I was nearly a foot shorter than him, so I felt like I could snuggle up to him. That's how we first met. He claimed he was already in love with me, and it showed from day one. It didn't take long for me to catch up, falling hopelessly and helplessly in love with him. He texted me as soon as he got home, making me feel like I was on cloud nine. We started going out together frequently after that initial meeting. We were in what many people of my generation would call the talking stage for about four months. We shared everything about ourselves, even learning to cook each other's favorite meals. It didn't take long before we knew every little detail about each other. I still vividly remember our first kiss. It happened at a wedding we decided to crash for fun. We were at my place playing Monopoly. Went out of nowhere. He turned to me and said, You know what would be a blast right now? I asked what, and he replied, Crashing a party. I inquired about the type of party, but he preferred to keep it a secret, only insisting that I bring my a game. And boy did I ever. We hailed a taxi to get there. It wasn't too far from where I lived, but too distant to walk. At the wedding, the cab driver nodded in approval as we told him where to go. I turned to Jake and said, you do know we're not dating, right? He hushed me saying, don't worry. After the night we'll have today, we definitely will be. He draped his jacket around my shoulders, and I was left speechless. I wanted to ask him why he didn't mention it was a wedding, or if he knew the couple getting married, and why he decided to crush a party we weren't invited to. But the words escaped me. That sentence made me blush intensely. Upon our arrival at the wedding, it turned out that he was acquainted with many of the attendees. The way they scrutinized me made it clear I wasn't supposed to be there, a fact that was true because neither of us had an invitation. During the wedding ceremony, I finally asked him the questions that had been on my mind. He explained that the groom had been a close friend of his until they both fell in love with the same woman, the bride. He described a day when while playing FIFA 14, they discussed how to resolve their predicament. Since neither was willing to step aside, they decided to settle it through a game. The winner would have the chance to pursue her while the loser agreed to back off. Unfortunately, he lost the game and, true to his word, decided to make a graceful exit leaving behind what he called a love chain. According to him, all three were in love with each other, and that day marked the first time he had spoken to either of them since losing the FIFA 14 match. I found it somewhat peculiar how men could create packs based on video games in the world of S. G.I., relationships, and even more astonishing, that they actually stuck to these packs. Though it was none of my business, 
Later during the reception, the trio of friends caught up. Jake shared a dance with the bride, and I must admit, despite her being already married, I couldn't help but feel a twinge of jealousy seeing them dance together, especially after what he had told me. Jake noticed the jealousy on my face and asked with a slight gentlemanly bow if I would join him for a dance. I took his hand and we began dancing. But I thought we weren't officially together. You shouldn't have any reason to be jealous, he remarked. What if I wanted a reason to be jealous? I replied, surprised at my own words. Did I just say that? Jake had a knack for bringing out my true feelings. He flashed a smile at me as we continued to dance, but this time he pulled me closer and I could feel his heart beat against the top of my head. He whispered sweet words in my ear, and as the dance neared its end, he gently lifted my chin, gazed into my eyes, and uttered those three words that can make anyone feel on top of the world. Then he kissed me, a kiss that felt like an eternity. My face turned crimson and, and I had butterflies in my stomach. After the kiss, while still locking eyes with me, he quipped, Now you have a reason to be jealous. Then he laughed. What a beautiful smile he had. I can't help but tear up as I write this. To be honest, I wouldn't be sharing this if I hadn't been advised to do so. Revisiting every memory we had hurts, because I'm haunted by the fact that I messed it all up in less than four hours. I had something that every woman dreams of, and I let my foolish actions destroy it. We spent every day together. He worked as a web developer, mostly remotely, only having to go to the office once or twice a week. One of the many things I admired about him was how well he had his life together. Most people his age were still figuring things out, but not him. He lived a nearly flawless life. Two years into our relationship, I had already quit smoking for a year. He had predicted it. We had started living together, and since I didn't have a job at the time, I was at home most of the day. I used to smoke when I was bored, tired, or unhappy. But I was none of those things when I was with him, so I didn't even realize how long it had been since I last smoked. Until he pointed it out. Around our second year together, my younger sister got married to her high school sweetheart. I was genuinely happy for her. But as we all know, watching your younger sibling get married before you can hit a nerve. And it did for me. I went to the wedding with Jake, and he noticed something was bothering me during the reception. He had a knack for recognizing when I was truly happy, or when something was amiss. He persistently tried to get me to open up, cracking jokes until it finally worked. I confessed to him how happy I was for my sister, and how I felt relieved that she wouldn't have to experience heartbreak or get hurt by a man. I told her how I always perceived her as a delicate and vulnerable girl, and how I often worried about the possibility of her going through the pain of being cheated on or experiencing other heartbreaking relationship issues. I mentioned how it seemed fitting that she, out of all my sisters including myself, was the one who found a fairy tale love story. Then, I brought up what had been bothering me. During my upbringing, my family frequently teased me about being the last one to get married. It was a recurring theme in our household to the extent that my nickname at home is still Runaway Bride. I explained to her that as we stood there dancing, I was the only single person among us. It wasn't something I thought he'd fully grasp, and he indeed didn't. He had always been indifferent about the idea of getting married. In his words, if I find that kind of love that makes me consider marriage, I do it without hesitation. But I won't be upset if it doesn't happen. He made a brief attempt to console me, but when it proved ineffective, he excused himself and left. I assumed he was leaving the wedding, and I considered following him home. However, he insisted that I stay behind, explaining that he only needed to retrieve the wedding gift he had left in the car. Upon his return, he and I presented our gift to the newlyweds. Afterward, he approached the DJ and requested a microphone. I wondered what he had in mind. He began by expressing his gratitude for being welcomed into the family and praised the couple's enduring love. Then he called me forward. I was taken by surprise, and it was evident from my bewildered expression. He lightened the mood by joking. Sorry, Ralph. I know you and your lovely wife didn't expect anything other than your wedding today, which elicited laughter from the crowd. He continued addressing me as Jelly Bean and recalled our previous conversation about marriage. He said, Remember when I told you that if I find that love, I'd marry without hesitation? Well, I'm thankful that God brought you into my life. And he began to express his feelings. You've illuminated my world, 
and in the years we've known each other, we've been incredibly close. I've been wanting to do this for a few weeks now, but I believe it's fate that I'm doing this today. Do you remember our first kiss? It happened at a wedding. So now, at another wedding, I'd like to ask you something. Hold on, is he about to do what I think he's about to do? I wondered, feeling a rush of excitement. He knelt down, taking a small box from his coat pocket. My goodness, he is. I couldn't contain my joy any longer. I was as thrilled as a child with too much sugar. My runaway bride, would you like to have the privilege of being jealous for the rest of our lives together? It was a bit cheesy, using the same words he had spoken when we first kissed. But I was genuinely delighted that he was asking me to marry him. I enthusiastically exclaimed yes, and jumped into his arms, causing both of us to tumble to the ground. Crowd erupted in laughter and applause. Before I continue, I'd like to offer some advice to any woman planning her wedding. Don't overthink it. The wedding itself isn't the most important thing. It's the marriage that truly matters. It's the life you share after that one day that holds the real significance. Well, planning the wedding was quite stressful. This, combined with the fact that I had just started a new job, took a toll on my mental state. My fiancé only had two requests, no bachelor or bachelorette parties, and he wanted to wear a traditional Igbo tribe outfit from Nigeria called a quok on our wedding day. It's funny how, as I got caught up in the nitty-gritty of wedding planning, frustration and anger would often surface, and sometimes I'd take it out on Jake. But he remained calm and helped me relax when I was stressed. He would reassure me that he didn't care about the wedding details. All he wanted was to be with me. Looking back, I can't fathom why that used to irritate me. As the wedding date drew near, I felt the need to relax and treat myself because of all the stress I was under. I decided to ask my maid of honor to organize a bachelorette party after all, and she happily agreed. Explaining this to him wasn't going to be easy, so I thought about making it seem like it was his idea. I tried using every manipulation tactic I knew on him, but none of them worked. His response was always the same six words. I only asked for two things. Then, a week before the bachelorette party, I decided to be honest with him. He was really furious, and I couldn't understand why. I didn't see why having a party to relax would be such a big deal, so significant that he didn't even sleep at home that night. I got very upset with him for not understanding why I wanted the party. I was angry because he only saw it as a breach of trust. I was genuinely mad at him because he made me feel guilty about a party that was meant for me to unwind. Every time I tried to apologize, he insisted that the only apology he'd accept was if I canceled the party. But I didn't. I absolutely did not. Well, two days into the party, he called me into the room and apologized for overreacting. He said he understood why I wanted the party and encouraged me to go and have fun. I finally got my way. At the party, there were male dancers, and my maid of honor was quite daring to say the least. Some of the men were quite attractive, I won't deny that. But initially, I just wanted to dance and forget about the stress of the past three months. After downing five shots, I found myself getting involved with one of the dancers. While I was in the midst of this foolishness, I thought I saw a figure that resembled my Jake. I considered it impossible that he would be there. I'm not exactly sure what happened next, but I do know that I had way too much to drink. The next morning, with a terrible hangover, I woke up to find a man sleeping next to me. Naturally, I assumed it was my boyfriend. As I exited the room, I realized that I was unfamiliar with this apartment. My friends, who were behaving in a rather promiscuous manner, bombarded me with questions. They wanted to know how it went. Was he good? Did he satisfy you? Did you know Jake came here? Hold on a second. Did someone just mention that Jake had been here? I hurriedly returned to the room and discovered that the man in the room was one of the dancers. No, 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 no. Did I just sleep with one of the dancers? Wait, did I hear someone say Jake came over here? I rushed out of the room and left the apartment, making my way back to my place. When I arrived, the sound of my key in the lock echoed eerily. Upon entering, a note fell from the top of the doorframe. The note read, Hope it was worth it. I looked up and saw that my place was completely empty. Everything that belonged to Jake was gone, leaving only the items I had purchased myself. I cried. I bawled my eyes out. I still keep that note as a reminder not to mess up the good things in my life. I attempted to call Jake, but there was no response. Texting him yielded the same result. 
I turned to WhatsApp to send a message, and that's when I noticed his last status update. It's over, guys. Wedding's off. He had blocked me on all platforms and cleared out everything from the apartment. There was no chance of ever seeing him again. That was three years ago, and the absence of closure has made it even more challenging to move on. Three years of therapy haven't done what they were supposed to, which has helped me overcome the pain I inflicted on myself. I had to explain to my family why the wedding wasn't happening anymore, and they were all disappointed in me. I understand that I may not have the right to ask for anything, but I truly wish I could find happiness again after squandering this opportunity. I realize that second chances are not guaranteed, but I desperately need to find happiness. It's been three agonizing years, and I've been living in misery. Jake, if you happen to read this, I'm sorry. And I still love you.